Are you 35 or older and you're concerned that your time for having a baby is slipping away? Today, I'm going to debunk that myth that age is a fertility barrier, and I will show you eight effective scientifically proven strategies that you can use to enhance your reproductive health starting today. Fertility does decline naturally with age, but that's not the full story. The latest research indicates significant opportunities to enhance egg quality and ovarian reserve even after 35 and 40. Key factors affecting fertility do include genetic factors. While we can't change genetics, we can optimize the environment in which your eggs are developing. Environmental influence, exposure to certain chemicals and stressors can affect fertility, but strategic lifestyle changes can minimize the impact of environmental toxins. And biological changes, hormonal shifts are natural, but with targeted nutritional and herbal interventions, we can support your body's reproductive system and not only slow down the aging process of your eggs, but also improve the quality of your eggs. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Dr. Gina Rosella Terranoni. I'm a board certified doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine and certified women's healthcare practitioner in integrative medicine. I use 2000 plus year old medical practices with the latest in scientific research, so you don't have to. In the past 23 plus years, I've helped over 2,000 women and couples over the age of 35 to become pregnant and have healthy babies. I hope to help you too. So please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel to get my weekly videos that contain action steps that you can start taking today. Improving egg quality. It's possible. And here's the eight ways that you can start to improve your egg quality today. First of all, we can't talk about egg quality without talking about antioxidants. Supplements like CoQ10, vitamin E, vitamin C, all of them have been shown to improve mitochondrial function in eggs, therefore improving egg quality. Dietary improvements, a diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids, antioxidants, and balanced protein sources can support follicular development. So we're talking salmon. I'm always talking about salmon, but there are other ways. I often tap into the Mediterranean diet and I'll modify that based on personalized preferences of each woman that I work with or each man that I work with, but also according to their specific fertility diagnoses that maybe my fertility clients would have. It has to be personalized to be effective. For women who have endometriosis, they'll be eating quite differently than a woman who has, say, anemia. Also, regarding food, we want to not only look at a personalized fertility meal plan, but also consider how to prepare the food, how to store your food. What are you using for containers? What are you using for cooking pans? Are you grilling? Are you broiling? There's so many things to factor. And are you eating raw food, which is a big no-no. There's definitely another video that I recently did on that. So please watch that. Also, we can't talk about food for fertility without looking at timed eating windows. So it's also called intermittent fasting. And I have a few videos on IF as well. I'm curious though, have you tried intermittent fasting before? Because a lot of clients that I work with that have PCOS are considering it or have heard of it. So if you are, drop me a comment below and let me know how it's going for you or if you have a question about it. Next up, mind-body techniques. Stress is a known factor that impairs fertility health. Techniques such as mindfulness, yoga, these have been proven to reduce stress and may improve reproductive outcomes. And inside my fertility community, I teach specific yoga poses combined with acupressure to target areas in the body that are specific to fertility and hormonal balances. This is a great combination to optimize your overall fertility health that is not commonly taught. In fact, I don't know any channels right now that are doing that. Follow my channel as well because I have some videos on here that combine yoga plus acupressure specifically for fertility. Next up, we need to understand and manage low ovarian reserve. Low ovarian reserve is diagnosed more frequently due to advanced reproductive technology. However, the number of eggs isn't the only factor that you have to consider. When your 
focused on fertility health. So if we look at high FSH levels have historically been seen as a negative indicator, but interventions like acupuncture, specific herbal treatments and formulas, lifestyle changes, all of these can help to balance hormone levels. Not being stuck or completely attached to numbers is one of the best ways to continually move forward on your fertility journey as long as you have a knowledgeable guide to help you. This is truly what it takes, especially if your doctor is saying that your numbers are poor or if they are bringing up poor egg quality and they're talking about using an egg donor. Comment consult below to apply to work with me. I can help you with that. Next, they often come up with numbers and AMH levels that are tested. So while AMH levels provide insights into ovarian reserve, these levels are not definitive predictors of fertility potential. I hope you hear that. We focus on improving the health of existing eggs through personalized herbal medicine. That is one of the strongest ways to do that. You have to remember that the majority of information that you find while scrolling online on your phone is limited to Western medicine's interpretation of their goggles of how they see and treat fertility health. It's important to know that there are other medical systems that have supported fertility health effectively for thousands of years before Western medicine was ever invented. Think about that for a minute. And if you're over 35 and you're trying to conceive, you are most likely going to get hit with every negative fact about how impossible it is to get pregnant without using Western medicine interventions. This is not the truth. And if you're using Western medicine, no problem. Why not improve your chances of that working by integrating holistic medicine? Integrative medicine is the best possible consideration to improve your chances of getting pregnant with a procedure like IVF or FET or IUI. Next up, let's talk about inflammation. This is rarely talked about. Inflammation can severely disrupt reproductive health. Reducing inflammation through anti-inflammatory foods, using turmeric or ginger, which is also good for circulation, berries, leafy greens can naturally reduce inflammation. Eliminating inflammatory foods. There's a list of them, but some of them to note that are in lots of food that we don't even expect. Sugar, processed foods, and excessive carbohydrates. Trying to avoid those types of foods. They cause inflammation. And then, of course, we have to look at herbal food recommendations. Like I'd mentioned ginger, but also maybe looking at echinacea. There's several others that will help support immune health and reduce inflammation directly benefiting fertility health. And there are many more, oh my gosh, specifically targeted Chinese and Western herbal medicines that wipe out inflammation and strengthen the immune system. Let's talk about some more holistic treatment approaches. So combining Western and Eastern medical practices offers the best approach to improving fertility health. We look at using, and not every single thing that I'm mentioning, but we do often use acupuncture. Or for my women who do not like needles, acupressure or patches that stimulate the points for you. So acupuncture, acupressure, they can help to improve blood circulation to the ovaries, enhancing the nutrients and oxygen available for egg development. But herbal medicine, tailored herbal formulas address specific fertility issues such as hormonal imbalances, and immune system issues. So many more things if you've got menstrual health issues or if you don't know or if you're ovulating or if your period's irregular, herbal medicine is one of the strongest things that you can use to regulate your menstrual cycle. But it is not a one-size-fits-all with herbal medicine. There are so many differences and tweaks that have to be made for a person, so that's really important to note. And then lifestyle adjustments, we have to look at improved or extended sleep that's not interrupted, regular exercising. So 
at least 30 minutes, five times a week. That's a minimum. I'm not doing uh, too much cardio or too heavy of weights or not too often and allowing proper rest time in between exercise cycles, but also really looking at and really paying attention to stress management. All of these are good for general health as well, but they are foundational for fertility health and for getting pregnant. As you know, if you've been on this fertility journey, I mean, gosh, some women I've been working with, they've been on the journey for six, seven, eight or more years. This is stressful. It's chronic stress. So that has to be addressed. And just because maybe you're used to it, right? We get so used to things that we think that's the normal way to feel. But that's what I help women with. So natural and holistic medicine should be the first focus and priority for all health that is not a medical emergency. After these systems are in place, and if you are still not able to conceive, then consider looking at IVF, IUI, FET. And if you decide to use a Western fertility procedure like that, be sure to increase your chances of conceiving by integrating it with holistic medicine and a holistic fertility doctor such as myself. If you want to know what that would look like to work with me and what the process and what the health plan would look like, comment, consultation, I will send you my link to apply to work with me directly. It's essential to approach your fertility path and your fertility journey with knowledge and support. Although you found me online, maybe you were scrolling. I encourage you to look more at research and books that maybe I mention and learn and be guided by a doctor such as myself who specializes and can do this work for you. I'm not telling you to stop scrolling necessarily, but just be careful of the sources that you find and make sure that they are based on either thousands of years of practice or evidence-based medicine. And being on the fertility journey is a full-time job. It can save you so much time, money, frustration, sadness, grief, by working with a specialist like myself who can guide you and shorten your path to parenthood. So stop scrolling, start enjoying your life, knowing that you're on the right health plan, understanding the underlying causes of fertility issues allows for targeted, effective health plans and treatments. By aligning medical advancements with holistic and integrative medicine, we can enhance your chances of getting pregnant, providing a comprehensive, supportive environment where you are just getting supported from all angles. We're helping you do everything that you possibly can to have the best possible outcome, which is getting pregnant and having a healthy baby. If you feel ready to address your fertility in a proactive, informed way, I invite you to schedule a consultation with me. We can talk about your fertility journey so far, see what's worked for you, what you're not sure about, what hasn't worked, to detect any red flags that need to be addressed right away. And I can talk to you how you can go about exploring that further. So comment, consult to apply to work with me. Remember, being over 35, being over 40, doesn't close the door on fertility. With today's medical insights and holistic approaches, you have more control than ever before. Thank you so much for watching. This is one of my comprehensive guides on navigating fertility after 35. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel.